filming Gary filming me. If you look deep enough in, you go into infinity. Before seeing how I winterized unbeknownst, let's look back to August 13th to the TI Cup, a race held by the Chippewa Yacht Club in Chippewa Bay. This is a reenactment of the Gold Cup races held in the same location, although now on a shorter race course, over a hundred years ago. It is a day when many beautiful wooden boats show up to strut their stuff. The morning was beautiful as Gary rode out in one of his Lymans, and I took unbeknownst to do some filming. scares me. Told you it was loud. This is practice lap. Look at that thing move though. My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this, the wooden boat experience.
Okay, unbeknownst needs to be winterized. We also got just a little bit of oil blowback here. You can see it's, this sits up like this and it's blowing back right here. This, I mean, not a lot of oil when you consider that we have, looks like about 47 hours on it this year. Actually probably close to 50 because we didn't have the hour meter on right at first. The bill just got a little bit of uh, residue in there. So we're just gonna start the motor up, warm it up, wash it, and then drain the water out, then restart it, and we're gonna put antifreeze into it. Now you can see we've got this fitting here, so we will have to uh, turn, there's a valve down there, down in there. If we shut the valve off, then the water intake that comes from underneath the boat will be shut off and this one will be turned on and then we'll run the water right directly in there and the antifreeze will do the same thing as well out of a bucket okay let's get to it this is a special hose that's been made up that has the female fitting on both ends on this end it hooks to the hose and on the other end it hooks to a hose fitting as well so you can see there's a regular clamp on there so we made that hose up special. It makes this whole process a lot easier. We do have some gas left in the tank. Let's see just how much. Let's see that this is marked with the different levels. Drop this in. So we've got about four gallons in there. It already has K100 in it. I'm a big believer in K100. Use it in all my boats. Actually, K100 diesel I use in my tractor as well. But we're going to put some stabilizer in here to make sure that this gas is still good next year. So we'll do that before we start it up and get it run into the engine as well. Fuel's on. Got to flip this switch down in here. Kind of awkward getting in and out of here. Where is that switch? There it is, way our valve. See it right there. Now that's off. Now that's on. Then we gotta clamp this so it stays on. See if we get wet here. All right, let's start it up. Cutlass bearing. We got to get some water on it. We want to burn that thing up. We'll put a little antifreeze on it. Stuff's real slippery. Okay, I used the brush on it a little bit, a little bit of um, engine cleaner. We'll spray it off now. Got to get the brush in on the bilge a little bit more. Gloves all wet. All right, better get in here. You can say I brushed right there and it cleaned up, but there's still a lot to do in here, so I'm gonna get the brush in here now. See how clean I can get the bilge. Before we put the antifreeze in, we've gotta drain the water out.
in the black. If you don't drain the water out, you end up diluting the antifreeze. Never made sense to me. I always start it, run it, drain the water, and then restart it and put the antifreeze in it. I suppose you can get just keep dumping more antifreeze in until it's not diluted, but it seems like a waste. Stuff's getting expensive. Okay, that is drained. Close that back up. I'll give this a quick once over with a brush, but it doesn't look too bad back here, just some dust and stuff. Okay, it looks pretty clean now. And lest you think from last week's episode that I stayed with the one not holding this the rest of the summer and just partied the summer, we did fix this right away. So it's double nutted now, hasn't loosened up since. Should have done that in the first place. One thing I've been doing is blasting out these limber holes. So those little tiny spots right there. Yeah, I'm getting that cleaned out underneath there. Those little triangles are where stuff collects. The limber holes are what allows the water to flow back and forth. If you don't get the stuff out of there, it's going to cause a problem. You can see there's some stuff right there. It was just a needle. But then what I'll do afterwards is we'll drain all the water out of here, let it dry out, and then the job will be next spring before you put it in the water. Give it a vacuum to get all that stuff that was in there out of here when it's dry, much easier when it's dry. So you can see the stuff trying to collect in that little limber area in there. There's not only some dust and stuff, but a piece from when the wiring was done, a little piece of insulation. So we're gonna blast all that stuff out with hose. We're gonna hit this with a brush a little bit. And after we get all this done, then we'll pull that drain plug and get the front of the boat down so all the water comes this way like it's supposed to. Well, look at how clogged that limber hole is right there. Man, there's a ton of stuff right there. So we're gonna blast all that stuff out of there. We got these little spots I put in so we can get to these areas. We got them out of the way. We'll clean this floor, make it look pretty. It's looking a little better in there. Let the bilge pump get rid of some of this so we can see. All right, doesn't look too bad. Three gallons in the bucket, an extra gallon in case we need it. A bucket underneath to hopefully catch some that we can reuse. Better get this out of the way before it falls. Are we all set? Let's start it up. Because we drained and emptied the exhaust manifolds and engine block, the only water left is in the copper pipe running back under the floor to the transom. It sits lower than the exhaust pipe and the engine. The motor is not running dry all this time. The pump is filling the engine block and exhaust manifolds with antifreeze before any comes out in the back at the pipe. See how much we got in there. About three gallons in there. That looks a little diluted, but I think that's because some water came out of the pipe. So gonna start it up for one more time for a second. Yeah, that looks real good. Okay, it's cleaned up. It's winterized. I'm gonna let it dry out for a while. 
It's supposed to start raining later today, but I'm going to let it dry out till then. I don't want to cover it up wet. Pretty soon it'll end up back in the boat shed anyway for a little bit of work and it'll finish drying out in there. But that's another thing off the list. And we'll unhook the batteries when we get it in the boat shed. But I'll turn them off now. want the water to drain out through the drain plug, but the trailer won't go down low enough. That's what I wanted to happen. We needed the water line to be level because the water was so all sitting back here. It wasn't going to the front. Now you can see it down there draining towards the front. And get rid of most of that. The rest will dry with a towel afterwards. That'll get pretty low. Now we've got to winterize this 305. A lot of stuff has been pulled off it. I don't have a way to run it easily. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that everything's drained out of the exhaust manifolds. I'm gonna pull the uh, thermostat housing off and I'm going to fill the block up that way. Let's see if it works. Alright, it's full of antifreeze. Put the thermostat back in, get it off this trailer and get it in the barn. Okay, the 305 is in place. I just gotta cover it up. Gotta find a small cover. There's one somewhere around here. This drone footage, shot early in August, shows a lot has happened here since then. I'm looking forward to getting unbeknownst into the boat shed for a few things and then moving the century and hacker in for the winter. More news soon on winter plans. Take a look at our Patreon page to see what you're missing there and consider signing up for as little as $2 a month. I'll see you next week in episode 10 of season four. Thanks for watching. <laughs>